Welcome to lecture 11, welcome to lecture 12 of uh, modern construction materials. We have looked at the microstructure of different uh, materials that we use in civil engineering, then we went on to look at the mechanical properties and other properties such as uh, those that affect the thermal behavior. And now we will start looking at the different construction materials. Uh, we will start with the structural materials and then go, we will go on to materials used in finishes and so on. And uh, to start with here, I have the skyline of Hong Kong, which gives an impressive exhibition of the modern construction materials that can be used. Hong Kong, as you know, has a small land area and very high population density. So, they go vertical in their living and working space and we have very impressive architecture and lot of advances in uh, civil engineering materials that are applied there. I will continue to talk about some uh, inspirational works. Some projects have pushed the limit of the civil engineering materials, have used them in the optimum way to facilitate comfort and cost effectiveness in our society. One example is the Bandra Worley ceiling built over Mahimbe in Mumbai about 5.6 kilometers long and the incorporation of this sea link or bridge reduces travel time by more than an hour, reduces travel time from more than an hour to just 7 minutes and roughly 1 point, roughly 125,000 vehicles use this bridge every day and this leads to a saving of about 1000 million rupees per year in vehicle operating cost. It is certainly a recent inspirational project as far as India is concerned. On the global scale, we all look up to the Burj Khalifa building, which has broken several records. It is over 820 meters in height, 160 stories tall, has consumed about 330,000 cubic meters of concrete, 39,000 tons of steel as reinforcement bars, 83,000 square meters of glass for the facades and a lot of people involved taking up about 22 million man hours for this construction. It is a building which has now become the emblem of Dubai. It has a 100 year design life. It gives a total built up area of about 600,000 square meters, 200,000 of which is residential space and over 30,000 as office space. We not only look up to buildings and bridges, but other structures as well. This is a very impressive trilogy of islands that have been constructed off the coast of Dubai. Three islands, Palm Jebel Ali, Palm Jumeria, and Palm Deira, were created to solve the shortage of coastline of Dubai. They've added 520 kilometers to the existing 60 kilometers of beaches in Dubai. And in the bottom picture, you can see um, an image, a satellite image taken from Google, where you see the original coastline of Dubai and these islands which are so big that you can see them even clearly in a satellite image. These are the islands that have been created. These are the artificial islands that have been created. They are really marvels of engineering. The first two consisted of about 100 million cubic meters of rock, rock and sand, whereas the last one, Palm Deira, will comprise of 1 billion cubic meters of rock and sand, which will make this new island. The channel tunnel or called the channel was a very impressive project and continues to be so. About 50 plus kilometers of undersea tunnel was constructed to link England and France. At the lowest point, it is about 75 meters deep, you see here, it is about 75 meters deep at this point and connecting France across the English channel to the United Kingdom. 
just in the first 5 years of operation the trains have carried about 30 million passengers and about 12 million tons of freight through the tunnel. I would also like to mention some examples of inspirational engineers who have used civil engineering to the advancement of our society and incorporated the proper use of materials as well as structural systems in their projects. M. Vishweshwaraya implemented a very complex system of irrigation in the Deccan region of India. He patented a system for raising storage in a reservoir without causing damage to the existing dam. He was also involved in flood protection system for Hyderabad and a erosion protection system in the Vishakhapatnam port. He supervised the construction of the Krishna Rajasagar dam across the Kaveri river which at that time was a landmark in, uh, in the Asian level in terms of civil engineering achievements. Another person that we can look up to is Fazlur Khan. He is considered by some to be the Einstein of structural engineering because of his innovation, innovative use of structural systems that still remain fundamental to skyscraper construction. His famous buildings in Chicago are the John Hancock Tower and the Sears Tower now called the Willis Tower. The latter was the world's tallest building for several decades and here he used the concept of bundled steel tubes to go very high and to create a new system of architecture in high rise buildings. This system enabled these high rise buildings to withstand very high forces that come about because of these the height and the number of stories in these buildings. Another person again inspirational is Stephen Bechtel who was an amazing project manager. He was fired up by grand voice projects, great projects. He liked projects that seem impossible and took them up as a challenge. He was the primary manager in the building of the Hoover Dam which was and continues to be an engineering marvel. This was constructed in the early 1930s, constructed over a period of 5 years workers excavated about 3 million cubic meters of rock and poured 4 million cubic meters of concrete in the Hoover Dam and his company has and continues to be involved in major projects all over the world. They have built pipelines and power plants in the Canadian Rockies across the Arabian desert and through South American jungles and his portfolio in particular even involves the construction of an entire city, the Jubail city in Saudi Arabia. So, we have lot of things that have occurred in the past that inspire us to continue to use materials and structures to benefit mankind to make things more comfortable and cost effective so that we can be more productive in our daily life. I have this uh, slide here which leads us on to the discussion of different engineering materials and we might wonder what was the first engineering material that human beings used. And to lead on to this I have this picture of the tiger cave carved probably in the 8th century near the city of Mahabalipuram in Tamil Nadu in the south of India where you see intricate carving around the face of the cave. Probably human beings started living in caves, started using rock and wood available as the first engineering materials. Today we have thousands of materials that are available to the engineer. However, the basic construction materials are few especially for structural purposes. We use concrete or reinforced concrete, steel and some other metals, clay products like bricks and tiles, stone and wood. 
Now let us look at the different classes of materials keeping in mind that we use only a few of this, but in future we might see more of these materials coming into play and we already see some niche applications of some materials. In terms of metals and alloys the most popular in construction are aluminum and steel. Alumin the most popular in construction are iron and steel. We also use aluminum and some of its alloys, copper has been used and continues to be in used in some, uh, some extent. Titanium is uh, used rarely, I will show you an application at the end of this lecture. Polymers, there are lot of polymers that are used in buildings and other structures. PVC pipes are very common, we have polyethylene that is very often used, PMMA polymethyl methacrylate used often for partitions and so on. So, lot of polymers are coming into usage and we will look at these when we discuss other materials during this course. Ceramics like bricks, concrete, other cement based structures, other cement based materials are used a lot in civil engineering. We do not see the use of other structural ceramics like alumina and so on being used, but we have a very high dependence on concrete and clay based ceramic products. Composites are becoming more and more important. We have a lot of repair retrofitting done with fiber reinforced polymers which have glass fibers or carbon fibers in them. We also have the case of filled polymers that is the matrix is a polymer and the filler could be anything from pieces of wood to some other inert material. I had a question on what is a cermet. Well, a cermet is a material which has a metal matrix and inclusions of ceramics. Generally the metal content is low, but we can have metal matrix composite with a higher metal content and the inclusions or the aggregate phase could be ceramic. Some natural materials have been used for a long, long time, wood being probably the first to be used and it continues to do so and other materials in a smaller scale have been used in the past and may be continues to be used. So, let us look at some examples of structural materials. We start with bridges and again possibly the first material that was used by human beings was wood to cross creeks and rivers and streams. This is a nice wooden bridge from Queens College, Cambridge originally built in 1749 with oak repaired later and rebuilt in 1905 with teak. This is another bridge, a longer one in Lucerne, Switzerland, built originally in the 1300s, probably repaired and replaced often. It got burnt down in 1993 and was rebuilt. This is a covered wooden bridge, which has the function of crossing this water body, but also giving protection while the people are crossing with a roof on top of the bridge. The fact that this was burnt down highlights the fact that timber is something that is prone to fires, prone to uh, disasters in a fire and it needs protection and there is a certain risk involved if the structure is not properly protected. Bridges spanning large rivers and water bodies have been made with masonry. This is a stone arch bridge from Merida in Spain built in the first century and you find that whenever we have masonry bridges they are in the shape of an arch because masonry blocks like stone brick and so on take compression very easily. We discussed this in the lecture of fracture mechanics that some materials brittle materials are very good in compression, but not good in not very good in tension. So, this arch structure 
gives rise to high compression and very little tension because of its shape. The vertical load is transferred to the abutments, the piers through compression and very little tension develops in the arch and this makes it ideal for materials such as bricks and masonry to be used. At the back here we see a concrete arch bridge which is more modern. This is a beautiful looking bridge from Kuldiga, Latvia originally completed in 1874 but destroyed in the first world war and rebuilt in 1926. This is of brick masonry again with the arches. Arches have also been done with steel spanning larger distances. This is the Louis first bridge of Porto in Portugal completed in 1886 with two decks. There is traffic going along the top and at the bottom covering uh, two levels of streets in the city of Porto. We have very nice looking bridges in India as well. This is the Howrah bridge of Kolkata completed in 1843 which replaced a floating bridge crossing the Howrah river. Bridges and other structures have become emblems of cities and this is a very good example of that the Golden Gate Bridge of San Francisco. Anyone who sees this image knows that this is from San Francisco and there are many structures which have similarly become icons. So, this is a suspension bridge and we have the impressive steel towers two of these spanning a long distance and this is a picture of the construction stage where you see the deck being moved and putting into place. This is the Sydney Harbour Bridge again crossing a large span here we see this is the deck and this is the arch transferring the deck load to the banks of the river. Concrete bridges can also be very elegant. This is the Jadukata bridge in Meghalaya in the north of India completed in 1997. This is the double cantilever bridge. You can see the picture during construction the two cantilevers from either bank and this is the completed structure. Very elegant structure very slender and blends with the surroundings. And we see that there are a lot of challenges in building these structures in remote areas and the type of material depends also on the geography availability of local materials and how we can construct. The confederation bridge a very long bridge several kilometers long of the coast of Canada completed in 1997. It is basically made of precast elements here you see a picture during construction where one of these double cantilever pieces are being placed on top of this pier. And this was one of the first structures made out of concrete which had a required design life of more than 100 years. So, the contractor had to show how the life could be guaranteed for more than 100 years. Similar conditions were placed on this bridge the great belt link bridge connecting Denmark and Sweden completed in a similar time 1998 and this linked the major part of Europe to the Scandinavian countries until the construction of this bridge and the associated tunnels crossing had to be done by ferry and this gave the possibility of road transportation across the northern part of Europe. Again these are massive concrete towers and this is a suspension bridge. Another very impressive bridge is the Milau viaduct in France completed in 2004 very high towers more than 200 meters tall towers. 
that led to the construction of this bridge that has cut down the travel time tremendously in, uh, in this valley. And uh, an elegant structure was designed not to interfere with the visual beauty of that region. And you can see the scale of these towers. If you look closely here, you see a white dot just above the cursor which is a car. So, you see that this the piers are really tall, however, they are quite elegant and look quite slender. This is a cable state bridge. Bridges have been made with other materials also. This is an experimental bridge that was con constructed with composites. The King's Stormwater Channel Bridge, a small bridge built in California to see how composites can be used in construction. Glass and carbon fiber reinforced polymers were used. Here you see the deck, which is a glass fiber reinforced polymer deck, very thin slender deck. And the deck is supported by girders, which are made out of these pipes or shells of carbon fiber reinforced polymer filled with lightweight concrete to, in, to induce the stiffness in this girder. In terms of buildings that we use to live in and work in and other purposes, many materials again have been used. Probably the first other than stone would have been wood to construct these buildings. In some places, wood is still used. For example, this is a log house from Norway, where we have the whole structure including the walls and the roof made out of logs of wood and additionally there is a layer of mud with grass and other plants growing on top possibly to increase the insulation so that it is kept warmer, the house can remain warmer inside. Closer to home we also have very good examples of timber construction. This is the Padmanabhapuram palace on the border of Kerala and Tamil Nadu from the 17th century still in very good shape with a lot of wood and tiles making up the structure. Brick masonry has been used a lot, we continues to do so. This is a picture from uh, current buildings in the United States, lot of buildings up to 3 or 4 stories are being made all across the world with brick masonry and this will continue to be a way of construction for non high rise buildings for a long time to come. A good example of brick construction we can find in, in Chennai in the south of India, the senate house completed in 1869, recently renovated and a very good example of the Indo-Saracenic uh, style of construction with arches and visible bricks on the facade. Masonry with stone has also been popular, lot of construction is, has been done, now less common, but again there is stone masonry construction in some areas like hilly regions of India and so on. This is an example um, that is quite impressive, the Kutub Minar in Delhi, a tower completed in 1230. Larger structures also have very good examples. The Cologne Cathedral in Germany built over a long period of time, probably additions were made, finally damaged during the second world war and repaired. A massive structure like many others of its type made completely of stone masonry. Combination of materials have been used in the past and are being used more commonly today. We look at uh, these pictures of masonry with wood reinforcing the masonry walls, so that there is stability. The white parts that you see here are masonry and the dark brown grid is wood to give stability to these walls. This is from Bourges, France from the 15th century. There are also more recent examples of different combinations of materials. This is a recent picture from Vashista and Himachal Pradesh, where you see 
wood stone being combined in small houses the stone is used to make the walls with wood as a reinforcement with wood make giving a structural frame and also we have here stone being used for the roofing like shingles this is material like slate which can be used as roofing material a recent incorporation is reinforced concrete also in traditional construction this is a picture from leh in ladakh in the north of india where probably it was common to have a timber frame and an infill wall made out of clay block blocks now we have modern construction utilizing that same concept but with reinforced concrete forming the structural system these are reinforced concrete uh, columns you see the concrete facade and the reinforcement sticking out for the next floor however clay blocks probably handmade are still being used for the walls and we have a decorative sunshade made out of wood inserted in the wall so the here we see an evolution with different materials more modern materials being used but the traditional system of construction continuing concrete is not only used in small buildings but very large buildings and we looked at the burj khalifa in the beginning of this lecture that is the tallest concrete building and the tallest building currently concrete has been used in skyscrapers tall buildings for a long time a landmark building at that time was the marina city in chicago 1959 which had parking over several of these floors followed by office and living space above several other towers and buildings have come up with concrete forming the uh, skeleton of the structural system petronas towers again a twin towers which were the tallest structures for a long time for several decades built in kuala lumpur in 1998 kuala lumpur malaysia with a facade of metal but the inside the structural system is concrete for a long time lot of the tallest buildings in the 70s and so on were steel framed we uh, talked about fazlur khan who was the designer of this building the sears tower now called the willis tower in chicago in the united states which has an impressive collection of very tall buildings this was built in the 191970s with a form of construction called steel tube construction where the building was split into many of these large steel tubes which housed the floors more recent 2004 again a combination of different materials in taipei 101 in taiwan completed in 2004 for a short period of time this was one of the tallest buildings in the world one of the materials that is being used now more and more often in uh, modern buildings is glass as a structural uh, material this is a very good example of a uh, facade and wall made out of glass the gla building in london united kingdom you see how the facade is curved glass can adapt to different shapes and you see now the interior see the facade with metal framing and glass and you have a spiral structure inside leading to the different floors this is an interesting example of a building made completely of glass including the stairs and the roof and floors it's an apple computer store in soho new york the united states completed in 2002 and it is a good example of how glass can be used even as a floor slab and walls one of the last examples i show you of impressive structures and innovative use of materials is this of the guggenheim museum in bilbao spain built in 
it is titanium clad steel makes up the skeleton of the structure along with limestone. The outside cladding was chosen by the architect Frank Gehry because of this impressive shape that he wanted totally unconventional and the sheen that it had the change in color by the brought about by the reflection of the sun going from a golden color that you see in the picture on the left to a silver shimmer on that you see on the right. This glitter really is impressive and this museum now has become an emblem of the city of Bilbao in Spain and this is the interior we have limestone and steel making up the structural system and the cladding on the outside as I said was titanium. So, what we see is there is a very wide choice of material these choices are changing there are incorporations combinations of different materials that are used in uh, civil engineering structures. So, the choice of the material is influenced by many factors first the type of application we saw some examples in this lecture there are there is a restriction of the type of materials that we can use depending on the application that we want to use them in. Cost effectiveness is very important we cannot over emphasize the fact that cost effectiveness controls the choice of materials in civil engineering. Performance has to be complied with we have to understand what performance is required for a type of application its usage its desired durability and therefore, we choose the appropriate material. We looked at some ways of optimizing the choice of the material when we looked at the lecture on uh, the part dealing with yield and we did a no yield design right in the beginning we looked at how we can optimize for stiffness and strength we looked at simple examples this becomes more complicated when we go to large and real structures, but performance is very very important we have to choose the material for the required performance and ensure that this performance requirement is met. Availability is also of paramount importance the geographical location because we cannot keep a structure cost effective we cannot make construction cost effective if the material is not locally available and we want large volumes of the same. So, we have seen and we can see that the type of material used varies from one geographical location to the other depending on what is available close to the construction site and this has led to evolution of different types of structural systems and material usage in different parts of the world. In terms of performance we also have to keep in mind the climate and we also always have in traditional architecture some materials being used more for certain climates than the other the cold and the heat and the rain and the wind and so on decide to some extent the materials that can be used the performance that is needed and this drives the choice of materials. More recently we have emphasized two other aspects in the choice of materials aesthetics which was possible probably which was probably important in emblematic structures some time back, but now it is becoming commonplace we want structures to look elegant we want structures to be aesthetically appealing because of the social value we feel nicer to use live and work in structures and buildings that look nice. So, aesthetics is becoming more and more important and when we talk later on in this course about finishes we will see how aesthetics is dominating the choice of finishing materials and there also we see a wide range of materials now available to satisfy the aesthetic requirements or sometimes what we call the architectural requirements. Lastly and quite importantly are environmental concerns 
the energy content of the materials, the amount and the type of raw materials used, the availability of raw materials and the emissions that could harm the environment produced during the manufacture are also becoming more and more important. There are projects where an environmental impact assessment is required which takes into account these aspects of the material and this will probably become more and more important and could reach a state where the environmental impact assessment is as important as an assessment of the structural safety and the cost. So, all these together can influence the choice of the material. So, this lecture has introduced different uh, structural materials that we use in civil engineering. We look basically at applications of wood, steel, concrete and so on. We also looked at some esoteric or uh, niche applications of titanium, glass and this might however, become more common in the future. Now, in the uh, subsequent lectures, what we are going to do is take each of these uh, structural materials, discuss in detail where they can be used, what are their uh, performance parameters and then we will also see some benefits and uh, limitations of these materials in the subsequent lectures. Thank you.